Hey, we are back on Metalhead's Journey. Josh, what's up, man? All right. Hey, welcome to another episode here on Metalhead's Journey. Hey, this is something uh, a little different that we're trying here. Uh, we're going to call this the Monthly Metal Spotlight. And uh, what we're trying to do is just kind of call out a few new albums that came out um, each month from maybe some lesser known bands, right? Um, so this is actually, I mean, we're running a little bit late here, but this is for, uh, the albums from November. And so we actually have three albums, um, tonight that we wanted to talk about. And these are three bands that, um, I mean, they are, I would say very under the radar. None of these bands, uh, average more than a hundred thousand monthly listens on Spotify right now. So these are definitely, I don't know, I don't want to say underground, but these are some lesser known bands for sure. So, um, let's just get into it. Yeah. So the the first album we're going to talk about, it's a band called Spirit World, and the album is called Death Western. Uh, this band formed in 2017. They've been called the world's first Death Western band. I thought that was pretty cool, because I think that fits when, when you hear the music. It, it does, um, actually, the that you mentioned. Yeah. The driving force in the band is a guy named Stu Folsom. Uh, he's a singer slash he plays multiple instruments in there. They've released two albums and they have just over 75,000 monthly listens on, uh, on Spotify. Yeah. They are the, they uh, are you know, the, the most popular quote cool, of the, the three, of the three that we're listening to today. Yeah. You know, so we, we listened to this album and I think this album for me is a little bit more in my, um, kind of my box right yeah like i agree definitely some some great grooves in here the riffs are nice uh i get a very like god hates us all era uh slayer vibe on this it, it's funny because well, i i also said that it, it feels like a little bit of slayer worship but i i call that like south of heaven era slayer specifically like yeah. and i think it's more to do like with the the use of melody like there is melody and hooks, even though the singer never like sings. Like, yeah, he's not. He's not. He never gets melodic. But it, there's definitely hooks in mind with a lot of these songs because they're very catchy. Yeah, yeah, they are. And it's. I mean, it's a breeze to listen to. It's not a very long album. Um, but I mean, for me, I had a couple of like s- some quick highlights to call out. There's a song on there called Ulcer, uh, which is really good. And I mean, I, I think the best song on the album by title and by content is Heretic Butcher. I mean, just a fucking banger, dude. So I also so those had, are those are two songs that I would add to like my overall playlist. So I also had those two songs. I also want to call out here Purified and Violence. I thought that song was really, really good. Uh, just my like quick overall notes before we get into like scores. Yeah, I just said, you know, Slayer Worship in a, a as a positive, right? Uh, good use of melody hooks to bring the songs together. Vocalist keeps the aggression and energy incredibly high. A uh, record you can easily jam and not something you have to be in any particular mood for, I feel like. Yeah. This is like a record you can just, like, if you don't know what to listen to, you can just throw this on. And I feel like it just went really quickly. And just, like, the songs are very, I know this sounds kind of amateurish or whatever but i think the, the songs are really headbanging inducing like because it's a lot of groove i feel like this kind of what why it's in your wheelhouse josh like it yeah. gives me a very groove metal vibe uh you could also yeah. say there's some pantera love here as well yeah um i mean look i'm i'm a simpleton man i like a good four four time signature meat and potatoes to something i can put on a headbang right if i gotta if i have to like do a math equation while i'm listening to your song dream theater um it's not always like you know not always my cup of tea. Yeah. So before we get into scoring and just kind of our final thoughts on this record before we move on, um, just for those keeping score, ha ha ha. Uh, anything uh, five or above is something we would recommend. So I know a lot of channels kind of, or a lot of people tend to think of their average right as like a seven before they would consider it good. On this channel, five or above is an is a re- a varying degree of a recommendation. Anything below a five is something we would not recommend for you know whatever reasons we may have. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind going forward because you know if we ever if we throw out a score like let's say a six, that means we enjoyed the record and we thought it was all right, but it's not like a you know, it's not, it's not like a legendary go must buy type of record, right? So a six yeah. on this channel is by no means bad. So just want to kind of give that example out there before we get going. Yeah. Dave, you want to start with your rating? Yes. Yeah, so I, I kind of played with my score a little bit. I settled 
uh, on a on a an appropriate number, I think, for this band at a six point nine. Um, I think this band fucks. Uh, it, it's uh, I think this band is very good. Um, and and like I said, at a six point nine for me, um, you know this this I don't think this album for me it didn't blow me away uh, necessarily, but I think it is easily a record I'll listen to and go back to. Um, you know, if I'm just in the mood to just bang my head and and, and jam something. Yeah, I would uh, I would tell you the more I listened to this album, the more there were very specific songs that stood out, and there was some filler that started kind of appearing on the album. So I didn't give it quite as high of a score. I'm at a five point eight. Um, again, the bangers are bangers. Um, but they're, and like the songs that I say are filler, they're not, they're not bad. Like, I'm not saying there's a skipper on the album by any means, but, um, there are some songs that just kind of lose their luster over time, just as some of the songs do, um, uh, can sound the same ish a little bit. So I'm at a 5.8, which again is still a recommend for us. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think what could have helped this record a little bit here for me is there are some guitar solos, but they definitely hold back in terms of like their the the number of them on this record like there's not really yeah. any lengthy guitar solos what little we get is good but i feel like they needed a little bit more of that throughout the record so yeah uh, josh tell us about this next record cuz this 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 is the my most this is the record i was i i ended up being the most interested in listening to and talking about of the three here yeah so uh the next band on the list here this is a band called disillusion and the album is called uh, AM. I am. Yeah. Yeah. A Y A M. Sorry if I'm butchering that. Uh, Disillusion, it's a German progressive metal band that formed in 1994 uh, by members Anthony Schmidt, Tobias Spear, Alex Motz, <laughs> Marcus Espenhain, and Jan Stolzel. Uh, they've released four records and have 19,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. So yeah. this is definitely our least uh, popular band on here. I think they, um, just doing a little bit of reading, they they went on a little bit of a hiatus in between their second and third record for a while. So I think that slowed down the uh, the train form a little bit. So I think that's probably why they're not quite as popular. But, uh, you know, look, if if Spirit World was in my wheelhouse, this is absolutely like out of my wheelhouse, 10 houses down the block. Like yeah. this is not something that I normally would have like sought out and put on myself. Um, but man, I'm glad I did. This is a fucking cool album. Yeah. Um, I, it was just like, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to explain it. Like Dave, this is more your kind of like your genre here. Cause it's a little bit more proggy. Right. So, yeah. I mean like, you know, what, what, what did you pick up on? What were you liking about this record? So, I think uh, like I have in my in my immediate notes here. So my my the first comparison I came to uh, came to my mind was a band called Opeth, uh, and that I I am familiar with uh, a few of their records, uh, but very Opeth vibes for me. Um, and just again, it's, you know, very progressive. Uh, what caught me off guard was the immediate use of like. Uh, like the horns or brass instruments, I could, yeah. I, I don't very symphonic. Know, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I guess, and and I want to add like not symphonic in the traditional like symphonic metal sense because this definitely kept the more uh, aggressive. This was definitely a very aggressive record overall, yeah. but it was, um, but it was more like used to like highlight, right? It was yeah. just like it was just little pieces. It wasn't like you know overbearing. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is. This is a this is a thinking man's metal. I mean, I don't think this is like the type of metal that that you know. I think to fully enjoy this, you kind of do need to like really be paying attention for the most yeah. part um, because a lot's going on in a lot of these songs. These aren't just yeah. like kickback and you know. I mean, obviously, people everyone's different, but you know, this isn't a record you just put on and then just go you know. 70 miles down the freeway and, 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 and let it ride. Right. This is something you yeah. have to enjoy. You have to savor. Yeah. I would tell you the thing that stood out to me the most on this album was the vocalist. I, I do. have a um, that. Yep. Dude. Like just, it's, I don't know. I, it's, 
you just don't get a ton of unique like vocalists anymore today. Like I don't know. I guess we're a little spoiled. We're going down the top fifty metal list, and we have like King Diamond and Dio and you know Halford, right? And those guys that are they're all kind of unique in their own way. Yeah. But like you know, today it's like it's a lot of screaming. So it's Phil Anselmo, Jamie Josta, right? Um, can't remember the guy Phil Labont from yeah. you know All That Remains, right? It's like it's a lot of like screaming in that vein. And this is like you get these really cool like talking parts that are kind of singy, kind of not. And then you get some good singing parts and then you have really aggressive vocals. Yeah. And you know, like this dude is just like, I don't know, man, he's very, it, this is very interesting. I, I love his record. Yeah. I, I think, I think, um, you know, as we continue to do these and with our, with our major focus being on, um, you know, bands, you know, that are lesser known, at least in the in the wide spectrum, right? You know, we're trying to find some more. Uh, I hate the term underground because it's not really the case, but yeah. uh, you know, trying to, to 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 peel back the layers and and find stuff that that may not be, you know, definitely away from mainstream. Um, and you know, finding a band like Disillusion, uh, you know, yeah, this vocalist is is pretty much great at everything he does. I have no crit- critiques there. You know, just some more things I, I put, you know, from the moment the horns come in in the opener, am uh, a grund to the epic closing moments with the piano vocals of the brook, this album felt like I was on a journey. Um, and I often, like, it felt like I hadn't heard really anything like this record, uh, at least at, at minimum this year. I've, I've not heard yeah. anything like this this year. Uh, the whole the vocals both heavy and clean they carry the record uh, but the instruments are not outdone uh, the instrumentation in this record is amazing throughout the drummer especially is really really good uh, but yeah all the guitar work I mean like this this record is there is not much about this record to not like like I think there's a song for everybody and or multiple songs for everybody really yeah when you break down to it Dave what are your uh, what are your highlights um so I have a I have a few. Um, so uh, in no particular order for me, uh, I got Tormento, uh, Am a, a Grund. I think just the one two punch of those first two songs is is really good. And then also from yeah. the from the Embers, I think is a fantastic song later on the record. Um, yeah, Dave, are you? Uh, well, I mean, you're sitting down. I can see you, but I just want you to be prepared for this. Yeah, I have I have two highlights on the album. Am a Grund and Abide the Storm. Now, <laughs> those are if the you two look at the double digit songs. <laughs> if you look at the track listing, you'll notice both of those songs are over 11 minutes. And if you've listened to us for any length of time, you know that, you know, I'm a booger eating moron and I don't like long songs, like super long songs like that. Um, but, dude, these are great. These are fucking great songs that have something in them that is actually entertaining for the full 11 minutes. Okay. It's not like this other band, you know, that kind of, you know, look, I don't, I don't want to say it, but it rhymes with tool. Okay. Like, like they, they write these long songs and they go nowhere. Okay. Like, look, I'm going to need Adam Jones look, to reach out to, uh, to these guys and be like, Hey, could you teach me how to write the long songs, please? Look, look I love tool tool fans out there. Look, don't flame the video. Okay. I love tool. Uh, Tool is a great band. Everybody, you know, has their favorites. So yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I I really enjoyed this record. Uh, looks, spoiler alert. This is kind of a a recent, a more recent revelation here. But this is my favorite album of the three we're talking about tonight. I'm coming in at a seven point three. So I, I I agree with you, Josh. I think this is the best of the three. Uh, I'm coming in considerably higher than you. Uh, wow. Like really high. Like I, I couldn't put this record down actually. Uh, once I got a hold of it, of the three, like I, I pretty much got to a point where I was like, okay, I know what I'm scoring. Those other two, I'm done with it. I just started. I was just listening to this for fun. Uh, I'm at an eight point seven. I think this is a. Damn. I think this is a fantastic record, and I've read that their previous record to this is also really, really good. Um, as part of their like one two punch like comeback that they've had. Uh, yeah. So I will definitely be checking out their previous record. I think this is 
I think this is one of the best records I've heard this year that was that that was released this year. Like if we redid our what? top 100 or our, I'm sorry, our top 5 of 2022 list, this would make my cut. You think so? Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, hey, last record that we're going to talk about this week, um it's a band called High Command and dude, I love this album title, Eclipse of the Dual Moons. Yeah. That is that's such a that's just such a cool title. So, uh, High Command formed in 2016. It's an American thrash metal band from uh, Worcester. Uh, uh, is it Worcester or is it Worcester? Worcester? Just go with it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, from Massachusetts. The band was formed by uh, Chris Berg. This guy's name is Razzle? I don't know. <laughs> Ryan McArdle and Kevin Fitzgerald. Uh, they've released two albums and have about 38,000 monthly listeners on Spotify right now. Yeah. So thrash. I don't know, man. This feels kind of death metally, right? Yeah, I would say it's it's like a, that's the vibe I got. It's like thrash death metal. You know, um, I would say it leans a little closer to thrash, but uh, it definitely yeah. the vocals definitely help lean it towards the death metal style. Um, yeah. yeah. So this is the album we've spent the most time with. We found we found this album first. Yeah. Uh, before the other two records, and so we've I think we've been listening to this record for. I don't know, about three weeks or so. And dude, just that's another good record, man. I mean, look, let me give you guys just let me give you guys a peek behind the curtain here. We're not gonna review a record on here that sucks. So, like (laughs) it's it's gonna sound redundant, but these are all good records because we're gonna review them. Um so just another just another good selection, right, for the for the month. And I think what's cool about the three that we got to do this month is they're all different. Yes. You know? I mean, one was much more of a groove metal than Proggy, whatever you want to call disillusion, and now this is just straight. I, like I said, I keep going to death metal, but death metal, thrash, whatever. Um, so all different subgenres, which is fun. But uh, I was I was instantly surprised that this band was from America. I just for whatever reason when I when I did the research and I saw that that's just not what I had anticipated. Uh, I agree. No, actually. For no particular reason, but I was just surprised. Well, it's just because <laughs> there's not a lot of good metal that uh, I should let me let me rephrase. There's not a lot of recent good metal that I can think of. Most of the time, most of the bands that we have found lately that have been really, really good have been overseas. So, like, yeah. uh, you know, to, to find one that that that's in our that's in our, you know, our backyard, uh, you know, is is uh, uh, I guess is, is, cool. is, is a cool surprise. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, yeah, great this, guitar work on this album. Oh Dude, yeah, great solos. Yeah, yeah. I like, think I think the guitar. I think of the, you know, of the three. I I think like the guitar really steals the show. At this in this band, uh, blistering solos throughout. Um, the vocalist uh, is good. Um, it reminds fine. me. It, it reminds me of the I don't know how familiar you are with Three Inches of Blood, Josh, uh, but there's the Three Inches of Blood had uh, two vocalists. Yeah, the the lower vocalist, the, not like, the higher one. Yeah, it, he sounds like the harsh vocalist to me. Yeah, uh, dude, uh, what a what a good what a good callback, dude. I haven't listened to them in forever. Yeah, yeah, Three Inches of Blood were great. I'm I was sorry. Yeah, when they got I was sad when they got dis- when they disbanded, but um, yeah, this this out al- you know this album that's a good feels, call. This album feels really old school. Like for me, I one of my notes here is like, if this record had shown up on our top fifty metal albums of all time list as an example, right? And this was something that was released in like eighty seven, like I would have bought it. Like I would, I would buy yeah. that probably because uh, yeah. the production isn't the production isn't. This is gonna sound like an insult, but the production isn't super great. But I think it lends it. It, it's a benefit in the sense that it 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 gives it an old school feel for me. Yeah. Um. That like like I said, this record would feel very at home in a late '80s, early '90s thrash or you know death thrash band. Um, yeah. It, I mean, it feels like a. I mean, it sounds like a remastered. Yeah. Album from the '80s, right? Like a Master of Puppets or something along those lines, just in terms of the production style. So to your point, like it gives it it gives it a slight old school thrash vibe like but a, it like just a, like an authentic vibe if you will i don't know yeah if that but is. it doesn't sound like it was produced for four thousand dollars because of dave mustaine's coke habit <laughs> yeah that's that's true that's true you know what i mean yeah that's fair uh josh, i mean look it wasn't it wasn't coke it was alcohol yeah 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 whatever josh what's your what's your score for this i'm curious 
Yeah. Uh, so I, like I said, I did like this record. I think this is the second best record we got to talk about. Uh, I'm, uh, we skipped highlights. You want to do highlights after scores? Oh, sorry. Uh, we'll, we can do highlights now. That's, that's my fault. I, I, I jumped the gun. I got excited. So, um, I'll go first on highlights real quick. Uh, so I have like, I picked five songs. I went crazy. There's only Jesus like, Christ. there's only like eight songs on this record, right? So, yeah. I've got uh, three. Um, I'll just go through them, basically. I think we're going to end up covering the whole record at this point. But uh, Fortified by Bloodshed and Imposing Hammers of Cold Sorcery. Uh, what a great title. Those are my two, yeah, like... Great great song titles. Uh, those are my, like, runner-ups or whatever. Uh, Chamber of Agony was an amazing song. Immortal Savagery. And look, my highlight, and I, I don't think Josh is going to have it, but my my favorite song on the record is the last song, uh, Spires of Sakartha. It's the 12-minute epic song. I just think, like, the the... Uh, from about the four minute mark on, uh, it's it's really really good. I I think the song definitely earns its its length, at least in my opinion. Yeah, it's got a cool intro too. It's got like a whole like produce like Sakatha, yeah, you know, yeah. thing going on. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I, I, I like it. I think it, like I said, it, it's it's interesting and it, it holds my interest. And like I said, the bridge and guitar solos and stuff in the middle are really good for me. Yeah. Uh, I have three songs. Uh, I got the the opening two tracks, Eclipse of the Dual Moons and Immortal song. Savagery. Dude, I mean, like, just, just a great one-two punch to start the record. And Dave, you're not going to believe it. Spires of Sakartha. Dude, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. I'm surprised. That's a great song, man. Dude, it is, man. And look, just, it's, again, it's a great use of the time. Like, listen, Adam... I know you're out there. I know you're watching the show. Big fan, right? I, well, I know you're a big fan of us. I'm not a big fan of you. Okay, listen. Here's the deal. Listen to these bands and learn how to write long songs, okay? <laughs> you're talking about Adam from from Tool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Dave, my rating for this album is a 6.5. I'm at, I'm at a 7.2. I think it's a very, very, very good record. Um... I will definitely listen to their previous record. I can't believe this band only has two two albums. Um, yeah. So and and I hopefully I, uh, hopefully more to come. I have a feeling of you know I would want to see all of these bands live. By the way, I, I don't know if that's not an official category, but I would see any of these bands live if they happen to come into town. Um, and uh, oh I, yeah, for sure. I imagine that High Command uh, they probably put on a hell of a show. Like yeah, I'll probably get that's, they're probably the best live band of the three. That'd just be my the, guess. Just, well, at least the for style. us, because the style of music is is again, I think more more what we normally listen to. Um, yeah. In, in general, but overall, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm very happy with these three, and I'm excited to see what December what December brings. For sure. So yeah, we're already working on a December list. Uh, we're doing some. You know, we're going to start listening to those now, and you know, we'll try to get the uh, December uh, recap out a little earlier into January than the very end, just so you guys can uh, get a taste of some of these uh, bands as well. Hey, if you uh, if you like what you're hearing here and you like the content that we've been putting out, please give us a like on the chan- or on the uh, on the on the video here. Give us a subscribe on the channel. Uh, we're putting out tons of metal content every single week. Reaction videos, album reviews, uh, metal spotlight now. We're working on all kinds of different content for you guys out there. So please uh, subscribe to the channel. Keep checking us out. Dave, what you got? Hey, if you if you think we uh, either missed some albums from November, put, us in, oh, put, yeah. a, put a comment in there. And if you have suggestions for what we should listen to for December... Put them in the put them in the comments as well. We'll take any suggestions we got. And hey, like if if we end up going with your suggestion, maybe we'll call you out if you want it. So there you go. All right. Well, hey, we'll see you guys next time. Live long and prosper. Take it easy, everybody.